I want to move on now to CRISPR-Cas9. Uh, we know much of our audience is, is very, very interested in this topic. Um, Steve, I'd like to start us off with, with you. Um, how does CRISPR-Cas9 compare to other genome editing tools? Uh, kind of the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, what are the benefits? Um, talk us through your thoughts on that. Absolutely. So I'll extend it to say CRISPR-Cas9 and CRISPR-Cas12a because it's another class two enzyme similar uh, to Cas9 that can be used and is commonly used and we use it as well and has certain advantages. But I would say that the system is programmable, right? In the sense that you, you do have to find a guide sequence within the gene that works and there's no guarantee that it will. But if you're lucky enough, and we've been lucky every time we've looked and every gene that we've tried to generate guides to, is it is programmable in the sense that you just need that guide and you don't have to do anything with the enzyme. Other systems that are available for genome editing you know, include talons and finger nucleases, and of course, the dead Cas enzymes that now have another enzyme attached to them, such as, um, you know, enzymes that are involved in reverse transcriptase or um, deaminases if you want to do base editing. So the way I think about it is, what is it that you want to do? And if you know what you want to do, then you can choose the tool to get there. Do you want to do gene disruption, a gene knockout? And there are many tools, as we mentioned. So zinc finger nucleases, talons, CRISPR, they all will do it. But the amount of work that you have to put into each system differs. And so their capabilities differ. And, and so I think the programmability of, of CRISPR makes it very attractive. And then maybe you want to do gene insertion. Well, all of those techniques differ in terms of their capability of inserting a gene. And we've actually found the best one in our hands to date is CRISPR-Cas12a for gene insertion. That one works the best, maybe because it, it generates overhangs rather than a blunt end. I'm not sure. Maybe what you want to do is a gene correction. A gene correction could be a single nucleotide change. And so there are uh, the systems that I described like uh, that have other types of enzymes attached like deaminases mm -hmm. where you want to change a single base. And so companies have done that kind of base editing and, and you know, or prime editing if you want to make small changes, or, you know, so it really depends upon what you want to do. In fact, there's even maybe the interest in doing something called a repeat expansion reduction. So this is where genes have these repeats and they have, there's so many that it actually can lead to disease that you want to modify by reducing that repeat expansion. And there are tools out there that can work. We published on a system uh, many years ago called type one, which is actually the most common type of CRISPR in the world. So most of the bacteria in the world actually use a type one. Uh, and less commonly are the class two ones, such as Cas9 and Cas12a. And that one, it uses two Cas-containing uh, complexes called Cascade. And what you can do is you can separate them with two different guides and try to cut out a big piece of DNA from the genome. Completely different question and, and different reason to use a genome editing tool. And so that's the way I think about it is what is it that you're trying to do and find the best tool for that purpose. And so there are many, there are really many to choose from. And um, I think that, you know, CRISPR has its advantages, but as we've discussed in the last half an hour, there are some, you know, off target issues because of promiscuity that have to be addressed. Yeah, sure. Okay. And I, I appreciate, and uh, I'm sure the audience does too, the, uh, the idea of, you know, what is the goal? What is the outcome in mind and work, work backwards? Um, before we move on, Eric, I'd like to hear from you, from your perspective and your research, um, you know, piggybacking on what Steve has shared with us. How does CRISPR-Cas9, in your experience, compare to other genome editing tools out there? Yeah, well, it's it's interesting um, when I, um, during my PhD, CRISPR kind of just entered the scene and 
Um, we were using talons and zinc finger nucleases at the time, and then pretty much everyone switched over to, to CRISPR um, to, to do answer research questions. And so I think it's just much more efficient. Uh, and and there's not, not to say that there's not a use for uh, talons and zinc finger nucleases and other gene editing tools, but um, CRISPR has been much more cost effective, um, efficient, can target anywhere where there's a PAM site, like Steve mentioned. And so um, it tends to be a tool. And as we can see, the audience is most interested in that. So it's, um, you know, there's many advantages for CRISPR over other tools, and people are starting to do directed evolution experiments to make mutations in certain domains to identify new, new, um, more efficient, uh, sort of, uh, Cas enzymes. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good research out there that's working on editing or, um, changing slightly Cas enzymes or like Steve mentioned, the guide RNAs to, and combining these strategies to be the most specific for the research question of interest.